set, we've got his talk going, and I'm going to let him talk. So, thanks, Josh. Thank you very much, Jessica. <laughs> And thanks everybody for coming out. I really don't want to stand between you and the social time and the rest of the evening. Um, so I'm going to go, go very quickly. Uh, the title of the talk is called Loading Dynamic Serverless Content Faster with Search. Uh, the thing uh, that we've heard tonight quite a bit, uh, static sites are, are fast. Um, static sites, there's no application server. There's no database queries blocking the rendering uh, and the receipt of the page. Caching is a lot easier, meaning that you don't really have to do it. Uh, HTML can be pre-generated during the build process. And of course, it's possible to serve through a CDN or to have something like Netlify handle all of that CDN junk for you. Um, Smashing Magazine, this is the second time you'll see it tonight. Um, Matt mentioned it a little bit earlier, where they received a 10x performance benefit from moving from WordPress over to a serverless or over to a static site architecture. Uh, 800 milliseconds down to 80 milliseconds in terms of that initial uh, page load. And then they're using APIs like Algolia, Stripe, and Cloudinary to fill in the dynamic components to get data onto the page to provide interactivity. Um, and the quote here from the Smashing Magazine article is, we don't really have a backend anymore. Instead, static HTML, advanced JavaScript APIs, running as a progressive web app with a service worker in the background, and blazingly fast performance served from a CDN near you. So it's a pretty cool way to describe modern web applications. But not everything is static. Uh, there's just some content that can't be pre-built. There's some things you don't know at build time. User-generated content, things that come in real time, things that are frequently updated. Uh, you know, at runtime, this type of content isn't going to be baked into the HTML page that gets served. Uh, it's going to be fetched by the browser. It's going to be fetched from a back end, maybe that you run, or an API, a third party API. Now, if this step takes too long, the site can feel slow. Even if that HTML page came back right away from a CDN, it might not matter if what the user is looking for on that page is actually dynamic content. Uh, this is a quote from my coworker, Emily Heyman, who published an article this week about web performance. Developers often invest quite a bit of time to reduce first page loads by even a few milliseconds, but forget to consider the impact of the interactions that follow. So dynamic content loading and the behavior that your site takes after that content is loaded is still part of performance. It's still something you need to think about. So how can Algolia help? Well, Algolia is designed for search, and more specifically, search as you type where latency is extremely important. Single digit milliseconds, double digit at most, never triple. If you've ever done a search as you type where it takes 100 milliseconds, you've been really frustrated because you expect the results, your search results to be back in the browser by the time you're hitting the next key. So it's, Algolia is designed for extremely low latency operations and that can include dynamic content loading. Um, you know, our, we talk about this in some of our articles about latency, but an ideal response time for us is you know, one to 10 milliseconds in the search engine, and then end to end bef between the search engine and the browser, 40 milliseconds. Um, and this is, a, this is a graph of average P90, P99 from a customer with a million records and doing about two or three million operations a month. And here we're looking at you know, three or four milliseconds average. The P99, even on a bad day, is 20 milliseconds. So 99% of operations are 20 milliseconds or faster. Um, the other thing with Algolia is we have some CDN-like fun functionality. We call it DSN for Distributed Search Network. And that means that if you have an Algolia index in the US, you can actually replicate that in Europe, in Asia, in over 15 regions and 47 data centers around the world. By getting your search endpoint closer to the end user, you can make the user experience better. Um, and the last thing is that you don't you think of search and you think of a search query, you don't always need a query to initiate a search. Algolia allows you to rank records in advance, which means that before the user even types a search query, you can serve them content based on rules that you've decided in advance for how to organize that content. Um, so when you combine all of those things, uh, you get dynamic content loading that can be much, much faster than your own backend sometimes or, or than a third party API. So I will show you a demo. And this is that part, I warned you, it's a very 
basic page. Uh, it's running on Glitch, which is one of my favorite platforms these days for setting up little demos. And there's just two sides. Uh, what this is, it is a very basic JavaScript site. And on the left, it's loading dynamic content from Algolia. And on the right, it's loading dynamic content from a, a backend. And if I refresh the page, you can get an idea for the difference between the Algolia response time and the backend response time. Uh, all that content is dynamic. Right now, if we made a change to that Algolia index, it would be updated as soon as we refresh. Um, but again, for the reasons I mentioned earlier, you can get this kind of performance. No, notice I'm not typing a search query. This is just content in my index and the rules that I've specified for what should show up first. Um, so if you have any questions about this, feel free to come up and talk to me. I'm sorry that I spoke very quickly. Uh, everyone in Algolia really appreciates you coming out and spending time with us. Uh, big thank you to the team from the vault for hosting us here. And please enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. <laughs>